Today we're going to be looking at finger tapping and I find one of the best inspirational riffs within like the math rock kind of uh, Midwest emo math rock adjacent music is the intro riff to the song always focused by the wonderful tiny moving parts. <laughs> So today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial about this riff, grab your guitar and let's go through this together. In math rock, Midwest Emo, um, often guitarists will change the tuning and that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to go from standard tuning to the tuning of D, A, E, A, C sharp, E. We're going to be tuning a few strings up and I really don't want you to worry. As long as you've put the strings on correctly, they shouldn't be breaking and you shouldn't really be worrying about the neck. It's not going to put that much extra tension on it. So our E string is going to come down to D our A string is going to stay the same, but make sure you tune that. Our D string is now going to go up to E. Next, we're going to tune our G string up to A. And then our C, uh, B string sorry, is going to go up a tone to C sharp. And then our E string will stay as E. Tune one more time. And then check your tuning. I find these tunings are wonderful. They kind of, I always give this like example of um, standard tuning is kind of like this blank canvas and it's up to you to take the song in the direction you want to. But these open tunings, you tune to some kind of chord and they situate you in some kind of feeling and you can just go from there basically. And for this song, we need one extra step. We're going to get a capo and we're going to place that across the fourth fret. And I suggest fixing the capo pretty close to the fret as well. And then the other thing that I always recommend is you're going to have to retune as well. You'll find, I mean, it's almost there, but some of the strings have gone a bit sharp. Okay, so let's get into learning the riff. We're going to break this riff into three different parts. We're going to have the ringing harmony notes and then the tapping, corresponding tapping part that goes with that. We're going to break it into three manageable chunks and then put it all together. This song does use a pick, but for the sake of this video, we just want to practice the finger tapping two-handed technique. So we're going to ditch the pick and we're going to make use of all of the fingers on our picking hand. So the first thing I'd like you to do is get familiar with the changing harmony. We're going to ring with our thumb on the low string here. Then we're going to hammer on from nowhere with our middle finger onto the fourth fret if we consider it from where the capo starts and then our index finger is going to come down and hammer on from nowhere onto the second fret and it's in four four times so like one two So I quickly played the first part of the riff. So we're going to hit the ringing notes and then you're going to use your middle finger to hit the seventh fret here. And you're going to pull off and then hammer on with the corresponding middle finger here on the second fret. And then you're going to repeat the same thing again, but this time using the index finger on the D string. And then this is where your ring finger will come in on the B string. You're going to tap on the 8th fret and pull off. And then lastly you're going to come back to your middle finger on the 7th fret here. Tap and pull off. Okay, so we're going to hammer on from nowhere onto the 4th fret. And you're going to keep that ringing with your middle finger here you're going to tap the seventh slide up to the sorry tap the fifth slide up to the seventh back down again and then pull off and the last part of the riff the easiest part we're going to hammer on from nowhere as we've been practicing onto the second fret and then with our middle finger with our index finger corresponding the fingers together just to make things easier we tap the fifth fret and slide down to the fourth and then pull off mm -hmm. 